This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. A vast universe exists within and beyond our reality. The frequencies that we can realize with our five senses are but a tiny part of all that is real. Welcome to the World Beyond Radio Show. I'm your host, Joe Wegent, and as always, we're coming at you from Evansville, Indiana. Our show is produced and carried by the X-Zone Broadcast Network and Relmar McConnell Media Company headquartered in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Edgar Casey was known as the world's most documented psychic. He was known as the sleeping prophet because he would go into a trance state and access what is called the Akashic Records, which are basically a recording of an individual's life. He would then use these records to access past lives of that individual and relate to them how it was useful for them today in their current situation. Likewise, Dolores Cannon, approaching it from a different direction, was a past life regression hypnotherapist, and she used hypnosis to take her clients back to some of their past life occurrences in order to allow them to see how a pattern had developed that will help them to deal with their issues today. Our special guest today is Chad Lyon. Chad Lyon is a licensed clinical social worker and a clinical hypnotherapist certified through the National Board of Certified Clinical Hypnotherapists. He has worked in a wide array of social services settings from child protective services, mental health, health care, and substance abuse. His true passion is using the power of the subconscious mind to help people find the healing and symptom relief that they have not been able to attain with traditional approaches in therapy. His private practice, Heart-Centered Hypnotherapy for Change, LLC, is geared toward this approach as one of the few hypnotherapists and the only heart-centered hypnotherapists in this area well, hello, Chad. How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you this morning? Oh, I tell you what, it could, it couldn't get any better over here. So, tell me about uh, hypnosis and how that works. Well, the hypnosis is ultimately it's uh, as humans we have ten uh, percent of our mind that we use on a day to day basis, which is basically what we use to short-term plan, analyze. It's what we're using every day in our everyday life. Um, but mm -hmm. there's 90% of our mind that we don't use or we don't tap into, which is the subconscious mind. And in that subconscious part of the mind is where everything is stored from um, memories to experiences, um, emotions, and all of those types of things are there in that subconscious mind. And oftentimes when those things may be traumatic experiences or events, um, they're in that subconscious mind. They can result in unwanted symptoms or issues or problems for people that oftentimes will present to my office. Outstanding. I've been, I've been uh, teaching the same thing in my work for years that the subconscious mind is so much more than what we actually use during our day-to-day -day work, you know, making grocery lists and phone calls and driving to work and those kinds of things. Do you use more of the subconscious mind terminology or the unconscious mind terminology? I always preferred the subconscious mind. What are your thoughts on that? I, as well, always prefer the subconscious mind as well. The thought of unconscious uh, it, it doesn't quite roll off the tongue for me. It doesn't feel right. It doesn't sound right to me because it makes I, it sound as if you're not there. Exactly. I've, I've 
I've read a number of articles and books where they talk about the unconscious mind. And to me, it always seems as if if you're unconscious, uh, none of it, it seems to be uh, really accessible because you're not uh, in a state where you can actually relate to any of it. Yeah, I agree completely. It's it's definitely um, subconscious is the term that I would prefer to use as well. Outstanding. So in just a, uh, a few seconds here, um, how do we access that subconscious mind in uh, hypnotherapy? Can you, can you give me about a 10-second uh, dis- description of that? It's basically just getting yourself to a relaxed, concentrated state, which brings you to a heightened sense of your emotions and your awareness of what's going on in your subconscious mind. Outstanding. Well, we're going to be right back in just a few moments, and we're going to be talking with Chad Lyon, who is a past life regression hypnotherapist and a clinical social worker. As always, you are listening to the World Beyond Radio Show. I am your host, Joe Wegent. And to find out more about the X-Zone Broadcast Network, you can always go to www.xzbn.net or you can contact me at Joe Wegent, that's Joe, W-E-I-G-A-N-T, at xzbn.net. We'll be right back in just a few minutes. Please hang around. This is Kevin Randall. For nearly 30 years, I have been investigating the case of the Roswell UFO. I have interviewed hundreds of people and stood on the crash site. Now in Roswell in the 21st century, I have reviewed dozens of hours of audio and videotaped interviews, examined hundreds of files that relate to the crash, and have returned to Roswell in an attempt to put all that information into the proper perspective. For the first time in Roswell in the 21st century, I have made a dispassionate reevaluation of all that material and provide a new look at what happened. This is a book that clears away all the clutter that has hidden the truth for so long, strips away the various lies that surround the case, exposes the Air Force attempts at cover-up, and found a core of solid information that tells us all where the case stands today. Roswell in the 21st Century will be available in just a few weeks. For more information, please visit my website at www.kevinrandall.blogspot.com. Gibbs A. Williams, Ph.D., is a practicing psychoanalyst, supervisor, researcher, and author in New York City. Much of his life has been dedicated to understanding nature and the uses of meaningful coincidences or synchronicities. His radical and original non-Jungian, non-mystical, non-magical theory of synchronicities illuminates much of the fog surrounding this challenging and perplexing topic. His ideas and manners are fresh, presented in a style that is both entertaining and highly informative. He is also an expert on crisis intervention, specially focused on violence reduction for the police and citizens, mastering anxiety, frustration, and stress without the use of medication, and effectively preventing and treating heroin addiction. Dr. Williams can be contacted at his email address at gwwilliamsny11 at aol.com or visit his website at www.drgibbswilliams.com. Shamanism is recognized as a method to access the quantum level. Mastery of shamanic skills puts spiritual information and healing power into your hands. Path Home Shamanic Art School, a bonded Colorado certified occupational school, has met rigorous state standards ensuring its director and instructors have the qualifications to teach the shamanic arts. Path Home offers a certification program in blocks of study. Block 1, a five-day intensive, will be held in the beautiful mountain town of Coldale, Colorado, October 13th through 18th, Registration deadline is September 12th. 
Experience Journey Trance, Power Animals, Helping Spirits, Sacred Space, and Life Purpose. Come discover your power. Join me, Gwilda Wiyaka, in the magical world of shamanism. Call 303-775-3431 or visit findyourpathhome.com. Welcome back to the World Beyond Radio Show. I'm your host, Joe Wegent, and today our special guest is Chad Lyon, who is a licensed hypnotherapist who also specializes in past life regression therapy. So, Chad, what exactly is heart-centered hypnotherapy? Well, heart-centered hypnotherapy is a um, form of hypnosis that is specialized in really addressing um, the emotions and the feelings in the body that are often tied to events that cause unwanted symptoms in people's lives. Um, I was trained by the Wellness Institute in Washington, and um, again, what it, ultimately what you are doing is locating emotions and feelings in the body that have gone unexpressed that are in the subconscious mind. And if you're able to um, help people to express those emotions and draw upon those emotions, they can de define a pattern in their life that has ultimately led to, many times, the reason why they were sent, uh, came to my office or a referral was sent to me for uh, whatever reason that they had come. Hmm. It, it almost sounds as if you and I are going at the... Uh the same things with different approaches. I also work very highly in the emotional aspects of uh, wellness and illness and going at it from the, the idea of Reiki and energy work and uh, psychic readings. Absolutely. I mean, the, the emotions in the body, um, they're, they're so very powerful. And oftentimes, you know, we as, as human beings, we have all of these emotions and, and when they go unexpressed, ultimately it's kind of like, a, a sink just backing up. It just builds up and builds up and builds up until there's a breaking point. Um, and oftentimes that breaking point for people um, leads to you know, a multitude of things. It could be addiction issues. It could be actual um, mind-body issues, things that manifest in the body physically, whether it's fibromyalgia or uh, thyroid issues, uh, TMJ, anything of that nature. So how does uh, going into a hypnotic state allow people to access uh, either the emotional responses to events and trauma or to the events and trauma themselves in order to achieve their own healing? Well, basically what you're doing is once you get someone in the hypnotic trance, it's just a very relaxed state. It's a very focused state, but it's a heightened sense of emotions. Um, and the belief and the theory is is that it's all connected to, of course, um, energies in the body and the chakras. Um, but these emotions are all connected to experiences and that your body has cellular memory. And so, for example, if someone had been sexually abused at a young age, oftentimes victims of sexual abuse don't say anything or can't say anything. They just have to lay still. Oftentimes they'll hold their breath and they'll just disassociate from the situation and from ultimately their body at that time and they just leave the situation and so if this happens over a period of time all of those emotions that were unexpressed are still there and their body memorizes that with the cellular memory um, which can go any any path ultimately um, but a lot of times things like anxiety and post-traumatic stress disorder um, things of that nature and then you have all of the symptoms that manifest and when these symptoms manifest that's when people are like okay there's an issue here but because we're using our conscious mind in our day-to-day -day life we're just unaware of those emotions that have been unexpressed and a lot of times someone may realize that hey you know I had this experience this happened but they're not able to make that connection so once you get them into that hypnotic trance they begin to make a pattern of the times in their life when Ultimately, this same emotion or feeling was present, and when the same emotion or feeling was present, the conclusions and the behaviors that manifested from that experience or emotions. Do clients oftentimes experience a uh, 
it's simply just a connection or do they actually uh, have the opportunity for an emotional release or being able to uh, work through those emotions in order to achieve a, you know, peace on the other side? There's an abs- absolutely there is a time for um, people to express those emotions, and I think that that is the part that sets um, this form of treatment apart from other uh, standards or other forms of hypnosis. Hypnosis can be used in many ways. It can be used for stage hypnosis. It can be very old school where you're just giving suggestions to the subconscious mind because the subconscious mind is open to suggestibility, although the subconscious mind would never do anything that you would not do or that would harm yourself. Um, Mm -hmm. But it gives you a time to actually express that emotion using things um, like gestalt, um, empty chair technique, um, having them actually there present in that moment, feeling that emotion and giving them the opportunity to express that emotion. Oftentimes, you know, I mean, I've done it many times in, in traditional talk therapy sessions without even thinking about it. Someone starts to cry, and what do you do? You hand them a Kleenex. Mm-hmm. So what message does that send that person? Here's a Kleenex. Stop crying. Wipe your tears. Rather than just saying, no, like you, you need to cry. You need to scream. You need to cuss. You need to yell um, to be able to release what you're experiencing so that you're not holding that in. And that's very important because... Again, with the emotions, when they just stack up and stack up and stack up, then you're looking at like a kitchen sink backing up, and eventually it's going to overflow. Outstanding. Yeah, I've I've had a number of people uh, had emotional release during uh, my practice in Reiki, and the, the energy tends to uh, bypass symptoms and go straight toward uh, causes and allow people to uh, release things they've been holding on to for a very long time. It's uh, interesting that hypnosis can also do that as well. So how does hypnosis help some of these, uh, let's say, weight loss or smoking cessation or some of these other things? How can hypnosis uh, help a person through some of these bad habits that they have developed? Well, ultimately, bad habits typically are developed due to um, stressors in our environment. For example, someone that is smoking, they may have began smoking because of stress level or because of um, events going on in their life and they needed some type of quote-unquote release. Again, the word release comes up. And so they're using that as um, a method to attain their release. It's my belief and my experience with with the clients that I work with that um, all of these types of things that we're doing as um, humans in the human flesh, that they're ultimately derive from a conclusion that we have found out about ourselves or made about ourselves due to an event or a sequence of events that has just continually reinforced a belief about who we are and what we are. And oftentimes that conclusion is covering the true issue or the true problem. And so with that, behaviors then happen um, that manifest, and then you get all of these symptoms such as overeating, binge eating, smoking, abusing alcohol or drugs, um, any type of of coping mechanism like that. Hmm. So do you see a correlation between certain types of addictions or certain types of habits related in a specific way to a particular emotional uh, setback or an emotional cause? You know, someone who eats too much may be thinking, uh, I don't have enough, you know, that kind of thing. Do you see a correlation with the habits with the emotions? There can be, um, but, you know, the the stance that I take in my practice is people's bodies really know what needs to happen for it to be healed. Um, People's subconscious mind know the experiences. So when I'm working with people, I'm allowing them to let those situations come up. And when those situations are coming up, they're coming up due to the following of an emotion. So as to a specific pattern of addictions due to specific emotions, um, you'll oftentimes find that uh, victims of sexual abuse are promiscuous because they've concluded things about their self that they're, um, they're only good enough for sex or the only way they can be loved is through having sex. Um, 
so yeah, there can be patterns that can be noted. Um, it just like each person is just so individualized, and there's never any session that is the same as the next. Exactly, exactly. So, how does uh, hypnosis work faster than other modalities? Well, when you look at um, the way that the world works today and the way that the insurance company works, um, you, you send someone to go in to talk with a therapist. Oftentimes, people um, that are having issues and problems have trust issues to begin with. So the time that it takes for the individual to develop that trust and the rapport with the therapist um, is quite the feat. Um, and furthermore, people that are using their conscious mind um, they're using that part of their mind that they're using every day. And so we don't want to sell people short and say that I've never met anybody that doesn't want what is best for them. Mm -hmm. So most people want what's best for themselves. And so when they go into a traditional talk therapy session, it's no different um, except for when you're using the hypnosis, you have access to that subconscious mind. And that subconscious mind has all of those memories that are stored and all of those emotions that are stored. And it also has the ability to take them back to those times where things have occurred to, again, release that emotion from that negative experience that's locking them in and then make new conclusions because of that. So in a traditional um, psychotherapy session, a person's conscious mind may either block uh, access to certain trauma or certain responses to trauma, or it may have simply forgotten about how that trauma may have affected them. Whereas in hypnosis, the conscious mind is bypassed and you can get right straight to the heart of the matter. Exactly. Outstanding. So that gets right back again to heart centered work. Yep. And it's all about the, like I said, the, hitting the nail on the head, the, the difference in the work is, you know, these emotions that need to be expressed, that the body wants to be expressed. And once they had the opportunity to express them, people are amazed at how much better they feel. They didn't realize that something as either significant or massive as whatever event occurred, how that has affected their life. So the key is allowing them to be able to express that and derive new conclusions from that. I've noticed that uh, with some uh, alternative healing modalities, it oftentimes takes a while for a client to kind of get the hang of what's happening before they can fully relax and immerse themselves in the process. Do you see that with hypnosis, or are you able to bypass that process? It's the, I would say that it's pretty much the same with the hypnosis there are some people that come in who are um, very open-minded. They are, could be that they are absolutely and completely, this is the last straw they can't take anymore, so they're willing to do anything and whatever. Um, and some people are just a little anxious about the experience. You're going to take over my mind. You're going to make me say or do things that I don't want to do. You're going to, you know, control me. And that's not what it is at all so much as just heightening their emotions and their senses. So typically... Um, you'll see one of two things happen with someone's first session. The first session, they'll either be like, wow, I didn't say everything that I was feeling, or they'll be like, holy cow, that was so intense and that was so powerful. How is that possible? So Exactly. Yeah, we'll well, we're going to be right back in a second. We'll go on with that topic when we return. You are listening to the World Beyond Radio Show, and I am your host, Joe Wegent. We are talking to Chad Lyon, a licensed hypnotherapist. And as always, you can uh, reach me at joewegent at xzbn.net. And we'll be right back in just a few moments, folks. Please hang around. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the Exome Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, High Tech with Corey Kay, and every minute of the 24-7, 365 programming of the Exome Broadcast Network by calling 712-432-9459, courtesy of TalkStream Live. 
No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 712-432-9459 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember, 712-432-9459 for the best of paranormal, new age, thought-provoking, sci-fi radio programming 24-7, 365. Wouldn't you love to know the secret to everything? Well then, meet Dr. Kimberly McGeorge and her cutting-edge breakthrough knowledge that combines science with possibility. Dr. Kimberly brings real-life answers and healing to those open to alternative solutions. She teaches solution-based programs and classes that will change all areas of your life forever. Specializing in conscious creation, intuitive readings, and energy medicine, you can rapidly shift health, relationships, business, and money and abundance challenges quickly. Receive her best-selling book, Secret to Everything, at no cost by going to secrettoeverything.com forward slash X zone. That's right. Transformation can start now. Just go to secrettoeverything.com forward slash X zone and receive Dr. Kimberly's book for free. While science pursues fact, magic accesses the quantum level, bridging random facts to form truth. As long as science and magic remain separate and polarized, the truth cannot be known. I'm Gwilda Wiecka. Join me on the Science of Magic radio program, dedicated to unification and evolution of consciousness. During each episode, I'll be speaking with experienced and respected scientists and mystics. From astrologers to astronomers, from medical doctors to shaman, the scientific method to dowsing and intuition, we'll weave together information from seemingly divergent practices to promote unity and enlightenment. Join me, Gwilda Wiyaka, and the Science of Magic right here on the Mutual Broadcast Network. For more information, visit www.thescienceofmagic.net. I am Dr. Carl O'Helvey, founder, president of a new cancer foundation focusing on evidence-based physical, mental, and spiritual interventions, including natural cancer cures, prayer, meditation, affirmations, nutrition, and other related holistic cancer prevention and cure modalities. These are used in cancer education, research, and financing care. I ask for your help to continue this important work by donating at www.holisticcancerfoundation.com. back to the world beyond radio show and as always we're here to introduce you to all the things that are out there and we're going to try to bring everything to you that is of the metaphysical paranormal supernatural or alternative healing world in order to better improve the way you live your lives today we're talking with chad lyon who is a licensed clinical hypnotherapist and also does past life regressions while in hypnotherapy before we get to the past life work chad um do you have people who uh, approach your work uh dealing strictly with uh, physical ailments or chronic diseases as opposed to habits or emotional setbacks or or other negative aspects of their lives do they approach you simply for uh things like cancer or fibro or ra or some other things like that not specifically in this area. I do not have a uh, large population of referrals for people that come in for physical ailments. A lot of the people that I see do come in for the mental health-related 
ailments or addiction, weight loss, smoking cessation. Um, but the hypnotherapy and the hypnosis is absolutely and completely tied in with um, the fact that emotions that are in the body, emotions that are unexpressed, and negative self-defeating beliefs that we have about ourselves, if they stay there in the subconscious and they're never really expressed and they're carried on and on and on, can actually manifest in the body as a physical symptom and cause a lot of physical pain and lead to a lot of time in doctor's offices and, and complicated issues. So, I couldn't agree more. We, uh, we feel our emotions in our gut. And whether it's fear or terror or excitement or, or anger, we feel that in our gut. And our gut is the, the repository of our immune system. And so if you're constantly heightening that area with emotional energy, it, that eventually could get compromised and become a serious illness. Absolutely. And, and you know, the, it goes in along with the chakras. Um, you know, it's tied into each each chakra will have a different part of the body that um, issues could manifest in. And, you know, the, the, the theory is that, you know, cancer could be indicative that someone has something inside of them that's just eating away at them, and that could be emotionally as well. Um, a lot of the autoimmune disorders, uh, the fibromyalgia, the things like that, um, again, the body is attacking itself. And so... It leads. It would lead people to, to to wonder and and to think. You know, what is it that's going on in their subconscious mind? What is the type of emotional experiences does this individual have that have not been released? And what type of healing? What type of freedom would they have if they were actually able to go to that time and go to that place and and be with that person that they were at the time and allow them give them that voice? You know, if I were the fibromyalgia, if I were the fibromyalgia in your body. What would I say? What would the voice be? And the response that you get from people oftentimes, like I said, will be those issues like anger, sadness, fear, any number of those things. Outstanding. So what is important about going into a past life to gain information? Why are past life regressions important to us as far as healing? Well, and again, that. The past life regressions, um, it all ultimately ties back to the emotions. Um, and there are lots of different people that could do like psychic readings uh, or types of, of readings where they're looking into their past lives. But the importance of that is, is really looking at the karmic energy from that previous life Mm-hmm. And I will say that nine times out of ten, and not, and pretty much ten times out of ten, there is always a pattern of the same type of either emotions or events or negative beliefs about themselves, whether it's in this life or in the past life. So the importance of for some people is that there are events, there are things that have occurred in a past life that have been a pervasive pattern that have ultimately carried over into the life that they're in now whether that's a lesson that they're um, supposed to be learning and they just haven't learned it, they haven't learned it, they haven't learned it, and they continue to repeat that, or it's the unexpressed sadness from an event. So oftentimes I never direct any of my clients to go anywhere specific. We get them in the hypnotic trance. We locate the emotions and the feelings that are in their body, and they go to the places that their body knows that they need to go. Um, so the importance is just allowing people to discover that pattern and opening it up to more than just saying, you know, your problems are just limited to this lifetime because we've all had many lifetimes and many bodies and many masters. So, Would you say that those karmic connections that, uh, that, that thread through each one of our different lives on this world, would that be connected to lessons that we need to learn about a specific thing, whether it's grief or loss or money or power or control or sex or whatever? Is that, that karmic thread woven through each one of those lives? Can we access those lessons to better be able to learn from them in this life? I think that the accessing of the lessons just in, just comes from 
understanding and seeing the pattern that is there. Um, once people are made aware of the pattern that's present, their their subconscious mind there automatically says, oh my gosh, that's why I do A, B, or C. That's why I've been suppressed for so long because this whole pattern is nothing but loss for me. And I've never once acknowledged that. And I can see that I didn't grieve that. I didn't express that. I didn't deal with that. And so it builds up to a point to where there's just this pinnacle of depression and they can't imagine themselves never not or not being depressed and they can't imagine what it's like because that's all they've ever known because of the constant pervasive pattern. So I think that's the revealing of it is just acknowledging and, and being known, aware of that pattern that is present. I've always said that knowing about a past life is useless unless you can actually apply some of the lessons from that life or some of the activity or actions of that life to what's currently happening today. When you're taking someone into a past life regression, do they establish that meaning for themselves in this life or do you uh, assist them in applying those lessons to this particular situation? Well, when people go into a past life, it'll be because that's where their mind went, and they will establish their own conclusion about that. They, it is a very real experience. They're seeing, they're using all of their senses and those emotions. They're present, and they're able to identify. Wow, like I see that in this lifetime, I had this type of experience, but also it correlates to this lifetime. And they're able to connect the two patterns together, which then ultimately, whether it's in the session in the office or that the next time they come in, they see me and they say, you know, over these last two weeks, it makes sense. I binge eat because, you know, I don't really care about my body or who I am because of A, B, and C. So it's the power of that subconscious mind. It's that it's all there. It's just waiting to be unlocked and waiting to be released. So when you start a hypnotherapy session, is that where you uh, try to generate your sessions to end up? Do you try to get them to go to a past life to establish that pattern of activity? Or do you wait to see what they're doing while in the hypnotic state and then see if a past life might also apply? I simply allow them to decide where the session goes because ultimately for some people uh, there, there's nothing in a past life that their subconscious mind feels like needs to be addressed and for some people that's the only thing that comes up um, some people have both um, there's also been sessions where I've had individuals that have regressed into the womb and it's a very chilling experience because they speak of they have very little words they're not sure of where they're at or what's going on, but hmm. they had an experience in the womb because of emotions that the mother was feeling. So, you know, that's all connected. The baby is connected to the mother. And so they're able to identify that they're feeling something, but they just don't really realize what was going on at the time because, of course, they were in the womb. But you're able to actually help them process that and bring that up to the surface so that they can express that emotion. Do you have people uh, often uh, visit or express more than one past life? I, yes. Oftentimes, um, the people oftentimes that do go into the past lives, again, they're the people that come in and they say, nothing has worked for me. I'm at the bottom of the barrel. This is the last resort. I'm not sure what else I can do because I cannot continue on like this. Or they are just... Um, an old soul, just very wide open to any experience. Um, and so they aren't so, they aren't fighting the hypnotic trance as much, constantly being distracted with conscious thoughts. They're just allowing themselves to go into this deep state of hypnosis to access and identify their pattern. So, so, the more desire a person has for healing allows them a greater chance for healing then. I think the desire absolutely has a large part to do with that. It's the level of engagement. You know, 
you can go see the greatest hypnotherapist, you can go see the greatest therapist or even the greatest doctor in the world. But if you don't want to change and you don't want a difference, then you take diabetes, for example. You know, you could see the greatest nutritionist in the entire world. But if you're not engaged in that change process, there's not going to be a change. And the same thing goes for hypnosis. Someone that goes in with the mindset of this doesn't work, this is malarkey, you know, this, this is never going to work. Well, of course, if that's what they're believing and that's what they think, they're not engaged in that process and their progress is going to be less and less. Hmm. So what would you say to people who are skeptical about this process? I would say that um, they should at least try some guided imagery, try some meditation, um, and worst case scenario is, you know, I've had people that come in and they are a little skeptical of the process, but after they completed their first session with me and they've taken their CD home and they've done the work over the week or two that before the next session, they decide to come in, they will find that it opens them up in a way that they did not realize that they could be opened up and they experience emotions um, at a level that they did not realize were that intense. So I would say um, open yourself up to the idea, um, maybe do a little research and try things like meditation and guided imagery to kind of allow you to feel and experience what it's like to be in that relaxed state. Well, we're going to be right back in just a second, folks. We are going to cut to a break here. We are talking with Chad Lyon, who is a licensed clinical hypnotherapist and also allows his patients to achieve healing by way of past life regression. Uh, we're going to be talking more with him and his method of allowing people to achieve peace and healing in just a few moments when we come back from our break. You are listening to the World Beyond Radio Show. I am your host, Joe Wegent. And as always, we're going to keep talking about the things that help you each and every day. We'll be right back. As host of Dialogue with Divinity, I am thrilled to join the Exxon Broadcast Network and their growing number of affiliates. My quest for a connection to the divine ignited my successful career path as an international spiritual counselor for over 40 years, an author of four books, and well-known metaphysical educator. My clients call me their spiritual mama. So my job is to offer you a radio show to help you grow spiritually with wisdom and get specific tools from guests who are experts in their field. Tune in to Dialogue with Divinity and be part of the conversation with Spirit. My goal, your happy soul. For more information, please visit my website at johannacarroll.com. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, High Tech with Corey Kay, and every minute of the 24-7, 365 programming of the Exxon Broadcast Network by calling 712-432-9459, courtesy of TalkStream Live. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 712-432-9459 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember, 712-432-9459 for the best of paranormal, new age, thought-provoking, sci-fi radio programming 24-7, 365.
Coming soon to the Exxon Broadcast Network is a different perspective with me, Kevin Randall, as your host. We'll be taking a close look at what is happening in the world of UFOs today with side trips into the paranormal. Guests will range from those who are household names to those who have a different perspective on a variety of topics. No topic will be taboo, but there will be tough questions asked as we all search for the truth about UFOs, the paranormal, and those things that excite us. Sometimes we'll agree with a guest and sometimes we won't, but we'll try to keep the program topical. For those of you who like to read, be sure to visit www.kevinrandall.blogspot.com and remember to listen to the other fine programs on the X-Zone Broadcast Network at www.xzbn.net. This is Kevin Randall. For nearly 30 years, I have been investigating the case of the Roswell UFO. I have interviewed hundreds of people and stood on the crash site. Now in Roswell in the 21st century, I have reviewed dozens of hours of audio and videotaped interviews, examined hundreds of files that relate to the crash, and have returned to Roswell in an attempt to put all that information into the proper perspective. For the first time in Roswell in the 21st century, I have made a dispassionate reevaluation of all that material and provide a new look at what happened. This is a book that clears away all the clutter that has hidden the truth for so long, strips away the various lies that surround the case, exposes the Air Force attempts at cover-up, and found a core of solid information that tells us all where the case stands today. Roswell in the 21st Century will be available in just a few weeks. For more information, please visit my website at www.kevinrandall.blogspot.com. What Happened in Benghazi is revealed by Nicholas Genix, author of Obama, Islam, and Benghazi. He informs the American people that President Obama deceived them by advocating a strong foreign policy prior to the 2012 presidential election, and Hillary Clinton supported this deception. As the title infers, there is a connection between Obama, Islam, and Benghazi. Ample evidence informs Americans that Obama's early indoctrination in the Quran developed an infinity for Islam, why the Quran is the source of discontent in many countries, and why the Obama foreign policy deception led to poor military action and caused the loss of American lives in Benghazi. Genix provides 36 questions for the Select Committee on Benghazi to validate if Americans are justified to mistrust President Obama and Hillary Clinton. An overview of Obama, Islam, and Benghazi is presented on the website www.futureofgodamen.com. That's www.futureofgodamen.com. Afterlife expert Roberta Grimes was the first one to say that dying can be fun. Now her best-selling book, The Fun of Dying, is available in stores worldwide. So if you wonder whether death ends life, how it feels to die, or what heaven might be like, The Fun of Dying was written for you. And if you have always been afraid of death, or if you worry that your life has no meaning, let The Fun of Dying ease your fears and bring new meaning to your life. Nothing said in The Fun of Dying is based on the teachings of any religion. Instead, Roberta draws on evidence to explain how death happens, how it feels, and what comes next. A lot of the best death-related evidence was produced in the first half of the 20th century. When it is put together with recent discoveries, it tells a consistent and amazing story. Roberta Grimes blogs and answers questions at robertagrimes.com. Her wonderful book, The Fun of Dying, is available on Amazon and at stores worldwide wherever books are sold. Welcome back to the World Beyond Radio Show. I'm your host, Joe Wegent. And today our special guest is Chad Lyon, a licensed certified hypnotherapist who specializes in using past regression to achieve patterns of emotional response that may affect healing today in this lifetime. Chad, when we left off last time, we were talking about the kinds of things that you do in session, and you mentioned... uh, sending people home with work to do with the CD of their uh, session. What kind of things do you have people work on and, and what kind of assignments do you have them do between sessions? Absolutely. That is a big part of it. Um, basically what occurs is in the session, each session is 90 minutes um, and you leave that session with 
uh, a recording of the induction and, and some of the coping skills that we make sure that people have in place, especially for those that have extreme trauma. Mm-hmm. And it is turned off for any processing of emotions and release of emotions and then turned back on for the healing work that is done. Um, and the healing work can consist of suggestions, new conclusions, behaviors, patterns, and things of that nature. So the goal ultimately, and someone who's truly engaged in the process, would take that CD home. Um, they would listen to the CD daily as a form to, lack of better word, you want to install new software. So the, hip, the, hypno, the hypnosis in the session uninstalls faulty software and the CD installs the new healthy software. And then after their meditation, their hypnotic trance of listening to the CD, they write their new conclusions and then their behaviors 10 to 15 times to reinforce that with each and every sense that's there. And then symptom relief begins to take place. I love that. Erasing old software and installing new software to develop new patterns. Do you have them do any other kind of uh, extra work, or is it just listening to the CDs to to program emotional responses for better uh, healthy uh, habit forming? Do you have them do any other kinds of things? You mentioned um, guided meditations. Do you offer them CDs or any other kinds of things that will help them along that path to, to do extra work? I do not offer any types of CDs for guided meditation that has been a consideration. But what I find out is that when people take the CD and those that are truly engaged and they use the CD, they come back to my office at the next session. And it's like, wow, you've smoked my brain. Like I did not, like I've made all of these epiphanies about this is why this is the way it is. This is why this happens. This is the reason for this. And and I want to explore this more because now I'm experiencing this. So that's the exciting part is the people that when they really are truly engaged, just their mind races with that and it takes off and runs. Beautiful. So uh, what would be your example of one of your greatest success stories that you've had uh, with a client? And of course, you know, we can't mention names or specific things like that, but what kind of, uh, you know, really drastic turnaround or, or really uh, uh, exciting kinds of uh, examples do you have of where this has been a, a remarkable job for some? Gosh, that's Tough question. I'm trying to think. You know, I mean, because most people when they come in, it's it's they come in one to two sessions. They begin to get symptom relief for what they came in for, and then usually by the sixth session, whatever issue they came in for, whether it was smoking or depression or anxiety, that issue is is well resolved and well managed. Um, I, I I did have a young lady who came in, and um, after her first session, um, this rage and this anger that was so present in her life um which led to the self-destructive pattern of of a substance abuse and chemical dependency off and on and uh relation poor relationship patterns um but after one session all of that anger was gone but ultimately the anger and the rage had been ultimately rooted in fear and sadness um and that was after one session. She said, you know, I have people asking me what's different about me. What am I doing differently? Why am I not flying off the handle anymore? Um, so that's just one of the exciting examples that someone can get when they take advantage of hypnosis. Now, was that particular client able to access past life information? This particular client um, did not access any past life information. Um but this particular client does believe in past lives um, and is wide open to the experience. So I, I fully expect that that may come up in a session. Um, I did have um, another client that came to me, and he saw me one time, and he regressed to two past lives and then related that past life to this current life, this karmic energy of this pervasive pattern of loss and death which led to debilitating depression that he had experienced all his life. He doesn't remember a time when he wasn't depressed. He came in for one session. He was able to identify that pattern, and he never saw me again to this Hmm. day. 
you said that most of your clients normally come in for about six sessions and, and their uh, immediate most glaring symptom or, or uh, debilitating habit is mostly resolved. Do you see clients over a long term, you know, two to three years, or, or is it mostly, you know, six to ten sessions? I mean, honestly, I, I wouldn't. Ultimately, the goal of the hypnosis and the goal of seeing a therapist is so that you can see that therapist. They can assist you in identifying the issue and helping you to resolve that issue so that you can live life as an independent person. Um, I think that some people may just enjoy the experience of having someone put them in the hypnotic trance and guide them through things as far as taking them down the levels and getting them relaxed because it's a different experience of meditating on your own and having just to bring yourself down as to having the voice of someone that you're listening to and having them take you down. So you don't have to do anything but just completely let go. So, But that's that's on a level of uh, just enjoying that, that relaxed state that it is. But the hypnosis is such a fast lane, a fast track to the, the resolution of the issues. I will say that people may come in and resolve that initial issue, but decide to address something else because of the resolution of the first issue, if that answers your question. Ah, uh, how about that? So you don't have people who come in, you know, once a week for three to five years just simply because they just, it takes them forever to get to that that issue that's really causing their, their problems. No, it's like, like I said, usually six sessions, unless you're looking at someone with extreme, extreme PTSD, that could take a, lo- a little bit more time. But on average, one to two sessions, symptom relief. By the sixth session, whatever it is, if you've done your work and you're engaged in that process, by the sixth session, you have you have managed whatever that was that you originally came in for. Do you see this becoming more pervasive in the general healthcare uh, uh, world in, in America? Do you see more people approaching this as a viable, reasonable option as opposed to simple allopathic care? I think that what will happen is in the bigger cities, it will begin to trickle down into some of the smaller cities. I absolutely see this as... Uh, becoming more of a viable path to treatment. The more people that experience it and the more people that find the power in it, um, who who doesn't go to a doctor that's amazing or a hairdresser that's amazing or even a massage therapist that's amazing, amazing and doesn't share that news with other people that have similar issues or problems. And so when people begin to find symptom relief, um, then the word begins to travel. And that's been kind of my motto for me is I don't want to build a business. I want to build people and I want to help heal people, help people to heal themselves. And then my business will build from those people whose lives have been changed and who've been able to find healing and relief in their life. That is beautiful. So whenever you talked earlier about, uh, people being referred to your practice, um, do you see, that as here's an option that works or I there's nothing left for you. This is the last resort. Go to this guy. I would say there's a healthy mix of both. Um, but I do get a lot of people that are at the end of the rope and they're like, nothing, nothing works. I've tried this medication. I've tried this therapy. I've been inpatient here, 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 and here. I need something that works. And I'm hoping that you can help me. For those people who are curious about hypnotherapy and even curious about past life regression, uh, what resources do you recommend for people to get more information to alleviate their their skepticism or their anxiety before they come to see you? Uh, There are are lots of different great books out there. Um, One of the great books is called Unbreaking the Soul, and you can get it off of Amazon, and the name of the author is... It's slipping my mind, but it's called Unbreaking the Soul, and it was written by a heart-centered hypnotherapist, and it's just stories and accounts of all of the different experiences that this heart-centered hypnotherapist has had with clients and the lives that have been changed. Outstanding. So, you know, it's amazing that there are so many ways that uh, people can achieve peace and healing and uh, a new uh, heart-centered life and energy work and hypnotherapy and past life regression are just small parts of this this gigantic health puzzle 
Absolutely. How can people get a hold of you? What is your website and what is your email? My F- website is uh, www.evansvillehypnosis.org. And my email address is Chadwick, C-H-A-D-W-I-C-K-L-C-S-W at gmail.com. Well, it has been an absolute pleasure having you on the show today. I, I, I know I've ever learned a lot, and I hope that our listeners have learned a lot. You have been listening to the World Beyond Radio Show, and I am your host, Joe Wegent. And as always, we are carried and produced by the X-Zone Broadcast Network, headquartered in Ontario, Canada. And for more information or to email me, you can email me at joewegent at xzbn.net. And join us again next time. I promise you, we'll talk again. Have a good day, folks. Mm-hmm.